Hey, my name is Steve Wolf. My call sign for amateur radio is AI6ZW. And we usually use phonetics on the radio. Sometimes there's a lot of static, like today, a lot of lightning crashes. So we, uh, my call sign would be Alpha India 6 Zulu Whiskey. I'm uh, the president of our amateur radio club here in Hemet, California. And the name of our club is the Lead of Forest Amateur Radio Club. Uh, I think we've been in existence for over 30 years. Um, dealing with this pandemic, uh, we've been having our meetings, our meetings using Zoom once a month in our, our board meetings on Zoom. Hopefully soon we'll be able to start meeting in person again. Because uh, one of the big things about our club meetings is it's a social gathering. People haven't seen each other for a month and they enjoy coming to see each other and maybe learn a little bit from a presentation during the meeting. But, uh, basically, uh, it's a hobby uh, that serves the community. Slogan we're with uh, the Amateur Radio Relay League is when all else fails, amateur radio. You've probably seen in uh, newscasts or in uh, articles in newspapers where they've had really bad earthquakes, huge disasters, hurricanes, a lot of tornadoes, damage, things like that. It can wipe out all communications in a, a region and amateur radio operators come to the rescue and set up emergency stations like we're doing today this whole setup here is an impromptu uh, setup like uh, we've got like from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. to set up our stations and then we make contacts with other hams all over the world ARRL Field Day is a worldwide event where we call ourselves hams. Some think it's because it's like ham on your arm with, uh, doing Morse code, which was the first form of radio communications, wireless communications. And uh, we uh, set up stations and let people come and they say we need to get a message out to our loved ones our phones don't work computers don't work and we ask them where they live and we have a traffic message system and we use that on different uh, modes of communication uh, uhf vhf or some close calls and hf for uh, worldwide, I just talked to somebody in Canada directly from here to there, Montana, and we've been talking to people all over the United States. And it's all about training ourselves so that if and when there is a disaster, we can just go to it, get it done, and then when people come wanting to get messages out. We can call for uh, people in that area, see if someone answers. They'll take a message. And if they do, we give them the message. And there's a system for it. And then uh, they will contact the uh, people. They give, you know, they'll have their, they'll be given their addresses, contact information through the message. And it is uh, secure as we can make it. And Eventually, the, uh, the, there will be a message coming back from the people they're trying to contact. But uh, it's almost like uh, a letter. And, uh, but they do it over the radio. And uh, message, it's slow. It's not like getting on the phone and calling grandma. But it, it, it gets done. It's possible. So uh, I, there were a lot of stories about military during the Vietnam or where they have Mars military auxiliary uh, 
uh, radio service that the, uh, the military could go to these stations and by using a, uh, a phone patch, they could talk to their loved ones over the phone. Uh, only for a few minutes, but it was great to hear their uh, their loved ones. So uh, that's amateur radio also. Uh, but as far as here in, in, in Hemet, uh, we're just trying to prepare and uh, we've, we've got several different organizations affiliated with our club and uh, we, we communicate with other amateur radio clubs in the area. We've got Golden Triangle and uh, Temecula. We've got uh, Reno Valley. Uh, we've got Menifee. There's several clubs that uh, where we, we know each other from uh, different events, and uh, it's like a community. It's a it's a fun hobby, but it also we can we can help the uh, the community sometimes. Uh, some people say that uh, amateur radio is going to die because everybody's going to have a smartphone. I don't know how many people have experienced their phone not working. Usually when there's, uh, like when you have a bad windstorm, a uh, big fire somewhere, wildfires, there's so many people trying to contact their loved ones that they overload the system. We can't all get on the cell phone at the same time. It'll overload it. And then it, and sometimes during an emergency, they actually shut the, the system down so they can get emergency signals through, through the different uh, cell towers and stuff. But, uh, it, uh, there, there are times when uh, we've experienced outages on cell phones and we just get on our uh, radios. Uh, locally we use our uh, club repeater which covers the whole San Jacinto Hemet uh, Valley and people can get in from Anza, uh, Sun City, Moreno Valley, we've had somebody call all the way from Riverside got in uh, to our repeater uh, and join us on our nets. Uh, so it's a, it's a big community and it's actually grown. And I think it's because we've got a lot of people that are concerned about the future, bad earthquake, uh, you know, doomsday scenario, preppers. And one of the things that they have on their checklist besides store, food storage, water storage, shelter, caches, things like that, is get a license, get a ham radio license. So if the system does, you know, if the stuff does hit the fan and the, the communications are down, we're licensed and we'll be able to communicate. And I think that's why our, our uh, membership of uh, or the license, number of licensed amateur radio operators has actually gone up. We've got more amateur radio operators that are licensed now than I think there ever was. I think there's over 700,000 uh, just in the United States. But uh, like I said, we're, we're communicating worldwide when the conditions are right. Uh, but we have several events besides field day uh, in our Christmas dinner every year. We, uh, we haven't done any lately because of the, the, the uh, epidemic or whatever you want to call it. But hopefully things are going to open up again. We'll start having our uh, fox hunts where we hide these little transmitters and we uh, increase our skills uh, on uh, location, uh, finding things, uh, locating you know, a, a weak signal. And, uh, and we, we try to get together as often as we can. But it's kind of hard right now. Right now, we haven't done anything for over a year together as a group. Uh, this is the first event we've been able to do since this COVID-19 started. Uh, and it, it's been rough. It's really hurt a lot of clubs. I've heard a lot of clubs have failed over it. Uh, a lot of our members uh, aren't real savvy with computers and stuff, so they don't want to get online and, and meet with us. So. Uh, What is the name of your club again? Lee DeForest, 
amateur radio club. Um, and how would someone join if they wanted to join your club? Okay, <clears throat> we go to our website. It's ldradioclub.com. So L D R A D I O C L U B dot com dot com, and uh, there are There's an application page on there you can print out. Uh, we've had like four new members in the last couple months that have uh, used that route. It's about the only route we have right now until we start meeting together again. Um, it, it's twenty-five dollars per year. Of course, we uh, we prorate it. But right now, it's uh, it's like half of that cost because it's going to be July here soon. And uh, right now, we're teaching a course on uh, getting the, the first license, the uh, technician class license. Uh, I think it's about halfway through now. We're doing that on Zoom. And sh uh, pretty soon we're going to have a, the, the, the next license, which is general. We're going to have a, a, a course on that on Zoom. So we, we help people get their licenses. We help, help them get uh, equipment. Like there's a gentleman here that uh, he, he just had dropped the hobby because he's uh, I think he's 90 some years old and he just can't operate uh, all the equipment like he wants to. And so he he practically gave his equipment away and it helps a lot of the new uh, members get good uh, used equipment fairly new for almost nothing so that's one way we help people and, uh, there's, there's similar there's a lot of information about the, uh, the club on that website uh, it's easy to manage uh, to go through and use um, it has the information on how to uh, program the radios for uh, operating with uh, being part of our nets that we have uh, several times during the week. We have a uh, an early net uh, Tuesday after uh, Tuesday evening at uh, 6:30, and then at 7:15 we have our club uh, roster net where we call all the members and check them in. And then we have, after that at eight o'clock we have a, a ten meter uh, we call it the ten meter eagle net. That's on HF where we use these radios, which is just directly from antenna to antenna instead of using the repeater. And then on um, Friday, uh, see, we've been having a meeting on Zoom for the uh, prepare for this field day on Wednesday. Uh, on Fridays we have. The Elmer Hour Net, and that's uh, that's for new. That's uh, Elmers are, are uh, mentors. That's what we call the mentors in, in amateur radio that help young people, the new new hams learn how to use the radios and stuff. Uh, help them set up stations. That's what we, we've been doing all day. All day. We'll be operating until noon tomorrow, basically. Uh, we're going to operate 24 hours straight, from 11 a.m. today to 11 a.m. tomorrow. So that's all the nets we have right now. Is there anything else you want to know about? But, uh, we have a lot of fun. It's just uh, we're just now starting to be able to move around. They're starting to open up everything, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to start meeting in person at our local where we don't normally meet. And, uh, Hopefully we can get our club uh, membership up and get some, we need some younger people uh, to carry on the hobby and uh, every every organization needs young people to keep strengthening the club and uh, we lost several members due to the COVID-19 this year and everybody was kind of afraid of uh, getting out and doing anything and it, it kind of shut down everything. It, people didn't really do much at home either. So, uh, but a lot of the part of, the, I'd say most of the fun of amateur radio is learning how to uh, build radios or uh, different equipment or repair them or work on them. Uh, if you get really into the hobby and the, the uh, 
architecture radios or whatever, you can actually uh, design your own radios if you choose, if you get into the science of it. Uh, some, a lot of people like doing that. If you like building things, uh, it's a good, good uh, constructive uh, It's a great hobby. It's, the great thing about amateur radio is you'll never run out of things to do because it's so vast. Uh, we were hoping to talk to the International Space Station today, uh, but the guy that was going to bring the equipment out, the handheld antenna, he was going to have it on a tripod and follow the ISS across the sky. We were going to uh, talk through the, the uh, had a repeater on it and uh, talk to people all over this side of the earth. But uh, it's just, there's so many different areas that uh, people find more interesting that they want to get into and just endless things you can do with amateur radio. It's just so diverse. So I encourage anybody to uh, to take a good look at it and uh, come visit us uh, when we start meeting again. Uh, contact us uh, on our website. There's a, a button where you can get more information, and the, uh, one of us will be emailed, and we'll uh, use that contact information to go back and talk to the people that are interested. That. Uh, ask for more information and uh, help them any way we can. I've helped uh, three people get licensed just this last couple months. It's been so much fun. In fact, one of the guys is uh, flying one of the tanker planes that uh, puts out the fires for Ryan Field.